Hey there, so today we have IDW's Q3 2018, and wow, if I were to draw a mental picture of IDW over the last few years, I want you to imagine a boat sailing the seas, and somehow when they went to port, they picked up something, like a plague rat. That thing, it has gone in, and it has diminished returns. You have seen more and more infected. What kind of plague? Well, you can draw your own conclusion on that. But in the last few uh, years, not only is the crew infected and the ship adrift, but I think the thing has caught fire. I literally think that anyone that had any sense has abandoned ship. Why did they do that? Well, look at the numbers here. It's bad. And when I say bad, I mean fireable bad. You know, if you look at the upper echelon of the employees within IDW, you'll notice that no one's left standing. CEO slash co-founder, he's gone. Ted Adams is gone after so long being with that company. The editor-in-chief, gone. The guy who decided to stand with Aubrey Sitterson, the guy who helped drive uh, G.I. Joe, one of their flagship commodities, to around 6,000 units sold per month. Yeah, that guy's gone. And of course, remember, that 6,000 units that are shipped out, those are going to the comic shop. How many of them are selling to people? Who knows? It's probably not anywhere near the 6,000, however. You also see your head editors, you see your president, and on, and the replacements that are coming in, they're not talking about comic books. They're talking about IP or intellectual property. They're talking about television because they know that comic books for them, it's a dead horse. You just can't keep beating that thing because, well, there's no money involved. Now, if you look at these here, this is uh, the conspiracy that so many uh, comic book pros try to talk about. They say that you are promoting conspiracy when you talk numbers. This is IDW's numbers. IDW Media Holding Incorporated, it was the condensed consolidated financial statement. So it's theirs. It's their prepared numbers. This isn't some estimated number. This isn't something out there. This is consolidated to talk to people that are investing in this profile. Now when you go through it, we are going to skip a few things. You know, we're going to go through and we're going to skip assets. So these are all important and I would encourage you to go and check them out. But for what we're speaking about. This is not what we want to look at. What we want to do is skip down and we want to look at page three. Now, when you uh, look at the numbers here, you can first see the uh, third month or three months ended here for uh, 2017 versus 2018. You'll notice in 2017, even though they were having what would begin this downward cycle that pretty much ends up in a crash and burn, they were still making money then. They actually had some rebound at the end of the year. This is in thousands, and you'll notice something. with If it is in brackets, that means it's a loss, and I don't mean that's a revenue new decline, as in you made less money. I mean, that's a hole in your pocket, and you're not making money. Instead, money's falling out of the pocket there. So if you look at the uh, money here for 2017, they made $143,000 for that three months ended in July. If you look at 2018, their entire earning, you know, revenue minus everything, it is negative $461,000. That's how much they made for three months. Now, when you look at the nine months ended for July, 2017 was bad. They were at negative $1.541 million. This year, now this is including a tax hit, but still, this year, they are at negative $7.174 million. Yes, that is entire earnings this year they have made. Now also on this, this is obfuscated a bit because they are uh, they're talking about adding on debt. Now we, there are other numbers in here, like I say, cash on hand and, and other uh, things that they have within that that are worth looking at. But for the purposes of our discussion, really we try to focus on the company and we try to focus on comic books within it. So you can see the equity of the company or the actual value of the company. And you look at the depreciation appreciation of it. If you want to imagine the actual worth of something, imagine you went out and you bought a car. 
and you say, ah, man, you know, this car, it was worth $20,000, but it has a loan against it for, say, $7,000. Well, the actual value of that car is not $20,000, and that's what you're looking at here. They are depreciating their company. Within these nine months, they have already depreciated their company. If we uh, if we rounded that out and we called it, say, uh, $50 um, million, and then we looked at the balance here and we rounded up, we were being nice and called that $45 million. Well, look at the depreciation there. You're talking about knocking off around 10% of your company's value. I mean, that is a huge hit. And that's not everything. Also, looking at the stock holding thing that transpired last year, year. There is a lot of stuff that I discussed within last year on that. Basically, it's like people gave themselves some free stock. They gave themselves a raise. But also, this is a way that you, you kind of lie to shareholders. You lie to them about how many problems are there because you, uh, you solidify the number. You make it look like it's at a certain place while also going in and continuing to, uh, to hold and uh, to give yourself um, pretty much a raise at a uh, decreased cost for stock. So it's, it's, it's really questionable on a lot of different levels. Now, something else that is very telling within this is the amount of debt. You'll notice that new debt has popped up. And to the point that I actually thought that I was looking at this incorrectly, I went back and I looked at quarter two to make sure. And this is the quarter two debt number. So you'll notice that the quarter two debt number, well, it was at $8.416 million. You'll notice the columns here. Well, if you look at the new debt ceilings, ah, you're at $21.444 million. They had gone out and picked up a new line of debt, which you can see here. So they're going in and they're further depreciating the company. Now, they do things like this just to note when they want to go out and say make new series is and on, but also they do that because companies are in bad shape. Now, when you look at uh, IDW and the way that they're laid out, you have IDW, IDW Entertainment, and you have CTM. For our purposes, we really focus on IDW. Now, that is comics plus other things that are involved like gaming. Now, gaming, and I'm talking board games, that actually pays off. That gives them dividend. So they're making money within that. Now, as I said before, we get to that, too. They took a hit in taxes. You'll notice that this portion, which I've discussed before, it, um, it hit them for a $3.761 million tax debt. So they actually have an a impact for that. It comes under the uh, Trump tax cuts. Well, there was also another portion of that within the Tax Cuts and Job Act, wherein they have to pay so much money because there's a one-time repatriation tax on earnings of certain foreign subsidiaries within that. So they had to actually pay for stuff where they had money that was overseas. Now, within that, I want you to consider that against the $7 million. And still, even after that, look at how much money they have actually lost. Now, when we start rolling through here, like I say, we're going to uh, skip past certain portions because we don't want to look at all of the consolidated numbers. We don't want to look at really IDW media holdings for this. I would encourage you to look at that. But what I want you to look at is IDW. Here, we're talking about numbers that are parked within comics. Now, what's interesting is if you look at, at certain, you know, certain networks out there, they will actually spin some of this in a positive way. You know, you can lose $800,000, but hey, at least you didn't lose $1.1 million last time, right? That's how it's being spun. That's a 27.2% uh, increase. Yeah, when you look at revenue, minus all of that, with uh, the income from operations, this is at a loss again. You know, uh, remembering brackets equals loss. So $801,000 for loss within the three-month period. If we're talking about nine months here, well, it's about a mirror of itself. You know, last year, you saw a negative $2.551 million. Well, this year, you're seeing a negative $2.532 million. Now, they talk about why this happens, and I think this is important to cover, so I'm going to go over this with you. So, IDW revenue increased by $175,000 in the three months in 
ended July 31st, 2018, compared to the prior three months there. Publishing revenue decreased $173,000, principally due to continued industry cyclical downward pressure driven by market leaders, as well as the timing of significant major brand titles. What they're saying there is actually true, too, in a way. There's fluffer or patter added to that, but what they're actually talking about is the market leaders out there are impacting the smaller companies. That's something that I talk about within the discussion quite a bit. You know, if you see, uh, say, Marvel going out and making decisions that don't uh, bring people into the comic shops, if, say, I'm not going out to pick up Amazing Spider-Man, then I'm less inclined to go out and pick up something in a secondary or tertiary company. You know, I'm not going to go down and pick up Impulse Buys, and I'm especially not going to do that if I stop going to the uh, the comic shop altogether. That's where you have bad practice impacting, but you also have players out there. You know, when you drive people away, when you have people out there that, you know, from, say, a Tom Taylor to a Scott Schneider to a Gail Simone and on, they are helping kill other companies. They want to go out and they want to put out this litmus test where they're telling that you and I, you know, as consumers have to jump through hoops. But really, you don't have to jump through any hoop. The company should be jumping through them. And if they don't, well, you see this plus bad practice pretty much impacting. Now also, you know, they talk about the timing of significant ma- major brand titles. That is an excuse that they utilize. You look at the uh, the numbers from one to another, you you know, they're, they're just, they're bleeding money. Now, IDW experienced a decrease in digital publishing of $102,000 within that, and this stuff was offset. So you think this loss could be much worse if gaming wasn't involved. IDW game revenue made $166,000, you know, within that time period they talk about. And also, you know, they had licensing revenue of $246,000, as well as increased revenues of $38,000 thousand dollars with other sources so within this time period of nine months if you look at this statement here idw's revenue decreased by 1.696 million dollars for the nine months there publishing revenue decreased by 2.474 million dollars again principally due to the the things with we discussed there they also love bringing up the fact that they switched book channel distributors. Now, you notice the date on that. They've been bringing that up. Well, hey, we, we actually switched off from this. You know, you'll see it actually pick up. You know, it's going to pick up next quarter, and it's going to pick up next quarter, and it's going to pick up next quarter. They've been saying that since April of 2017. So that's not actually going to ever pick up. You know, when they talk about long term, still waiting to see that. Then IDW experienced a decrease in digital publishing of $61,000 for that area um, related to the timing of digital revenue sources and an increase in IDW games of $452,000, principally due to the timing and so on that they talk about, and an increase in licensing revenue of uh, $314,000 for licensing arrangements and other changes of $73,000. So when you see these, this comic loss is much worse when you think about the impact of this because you actually have gaming making money out there. Now, what kind of impact does this have? Well, you see the direct cost of revenues. This is talking about print expenses, but also the cost of artists and writers. Now, when you're decreasing this, when you see fall-offs for the year, yeah, that means that people aren't getting jobs. Not only are you not printing books there, but you're not paying people to do any work in books. You know, you're basically cutting costs, and they cut costs by $886,000 within that. Also, when you look at the uh, gross margin for the three and nine months, you know, you see uh, it changed to uh, 37.9 and 38 Point eight percent from 36.7 and 39.6 percent. Now, selling general and administrative, I think that this is important to note too, because when you look at exactly what some of this kind of stuff 
covers. I mean, the selling general and administrative expenses, they decreased by $827,000. You know, so when you're thinking about what that is, you say, huh, I wonder what's there. Salaries and benefits are in there, a decrease by $76,000. Again, people aren't getting paid there. Driven by the number of employees selling and distribution of one hundred and eighty or one hundred and forty eight thousand dollars dropped, driven primarily by lower costs for shipping, uh, IDW games and on. So if you look at this here, I mean, you see cuts happening and this it should worry pros within this because what you're seeing is a company that's moving away from you. You're actually out be- being outmoded by a company that is saying that you're pretty much a stop loss. You know, we've got to stop this sometime. We've got to staunch the bleeding. How do you accomplish that? Quite simply, the people that work with you, they're the people that pay the most. That's the thing that I think that employees with IDW need to understand. When you're looking at these numbers, they mean something. The spin and the rhetoric that the company is feeding you, yeah, they're telling you that while they're going out. And they're making corrections to their marketing practice. And the correction is moving away from jobs that pretty much employ you. So when you're deciding to go out and you're deciding to say all of these numbers are conspiracy, and those terrible comic skaters, they're out there trying to hurt me. Yeah, what we're talking about are products that are worth buying and being professional. I see many of you going out and trying to war on consumers too. And this, it shows the impact of that. It shows the impact of bad practice, period. Some of that is external from the professional, but some of that is internal. Some of that is you. And you could go in, you could change that up, but you continue to do this for over a year now. And you've lost a lot of people in the process. It showcases a problem. And this continues on. And it shows it through the entirety of the business. I mean, you can see this broken down as well through IDW Entertainment because there's no shows that are going on currently. So you don't have anything that's going to uh, go in and positively impact those numbers. I mean, if you don't have shows that are being sold, you go from, uh, you know, making money within that time to losing money. And when you look at, say, a nine-month period, you went in from a four hundred and forty six thousand dollar positive to a four hundred and one thousand dollar negative for the entire year. These types of things they may not kill a business, but these types of things they definitely impact the professional related to it because of course someone at the end of the day has to pay and after you fired all of the upper tier management, well who do you think pays afterwards now i 'm not going to cover the rest of this thing, you can go and check it out. In fact, I would encourage you to do so. But my final thoughts on this are, we are are continuing to see IDW pay for bad practice. Now, will anything happen to the company? I mean, it's backed by people with quite a bit of money. We're talking about, you know, billions of dollars that are out there. You're talking about someone with hundreds of millions of dollars themselves underwriting something. So they can keep this thing moving however they want. At the end of the day, however, people that are involved in this, pros, they need to look at the market and they need to stop lying to themselves. See, the thing that a lot of people are not being honest with themselves is, is the fact that you are attacking consumers. So what if you win? I mean, what prize are you going to get at the end of that proverbial rainbow? You know what that looks like when you finish it up? It looks like IDW's numbers now. This is the kind of thing that you reap when you go out and you call people ists and phobes and on. When you see these kind of things added to bad practice that is coming from not only an IDW, but companies outside of that, all of that thing has a snowball effect and it impacts. So yeah, there can be people out there like say a Ron Martz or a Gail Simone or a Scott Schneider, Joe Casada, Tom Brevor, and on that want to spin this fantasy that comic books are doing great but when you look at this practice here you can look outside of the overshipment numbers you can look outside of these things where they obfuscate the damage done and you can see what happens to a company here as it pretty
pretty much drowns under the weight of the decisions that they and other people are making out there. Now, if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider supporting channels. I mean, this is the wrong thing variety, so of course, this itself may not be de-incentivized, but pretty much everything you do is. So I would uh, ask that you consider supporting this and other channels. There are links inside the description. There is a Patreon link, PayPal link, and on. Also, please like and subscribe. Uh, you know, we've just passed 9,000 on the way to 10,000. You know, when we get there, I think we'll have some kind of giveaway. And of course, I appreciate all of the continued support. And I want to know what you think about this stuff. So leave comments. And again, thank you.